frontal attack gives three guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. We <laughs> just we <don't> miss <laughs> tested okay. a lot. From the testing? So Priya's yeah. sick, she left early. Okay, she was sick. I'm assuming um, Garrett, Matt, and Melissa are at lunch because they have a lunch. Oh yeah, they, they know to be here, but I'm at the International Space Education Institute in Leipzig, Germany. And what they do there is try to instill an excitement in math and science of the moon buggy fever we just have, they've had for a while. So I want you to give them a warm welcome, please. And okay, no. okay, so. so hello. Um, unfortunately, oh, I'm. Oh. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you for being here. It's a nice um, experience for us to stay in Washington in a school, in a high school, uh, and to tell you some about our experiences from the Moon Buggy Race. We are competitors since seven years with our association. We have a small association who we, where we collect a lot of students from other schools to create a team and to start a competition like the Moon Buggy Race. We are going also to a space competition in Russia, in Moscow, uh, by the cosmonauts and here by the astronauts. Um, what is uh, the reason of everything? Uh, it's the same as, as here. STEM disciplines motivate students like yours for future missions, for future um, professions. and perhaps to make a nice uh, graduate in the, in, the, in the college or in the high school. In the college, high school is Germany, the Hochschule is, this is the university, and, um, and to, uh, to make a good engineer for the future. Um, what you have in the moon buggy is a hard work. You know it by yourself. Um, and what you need to make is um, a lot of uh, science work, a lot of technical work, a lot of uh, computer and electronic work also the marketing work to explain to the people that this is cost money, that you have to collect money for this, to, to be the best, to have the best materials. So our students are going to the, to the um, sponsors and to the press and explain what they do, they make their blogs and collect the sponsors and then uh, the core values of the NASA is mostly the teamwork, integrity, safety and the excellence. So that we went last year with four teams. You see here Germany, India, Italy, Russia, and uh, also another German team, high school and college, to the NASA Moon Buggy Race. And in that travel, what you make, you meet the CEO of the Russian Aerospace, of the European Aerospace. This is uh, Buzz Aldrin. You see a shuttle or a, a rocket launch. And all this way, um, on to reach the goal, you must um, be orientated, hard orientated for this goal, and you see a lot of things what only some people have seen before. We start with a small uh, sentence or with a small um, uh, module, like a mini buggy. This is a, a laser cutted piece where you can, in, in two hours, assemble a small moon buggy of this size for your desk by yourself to see if you have some atomic uh, talents to assemble a small moon buggy and then you can start to make a big moon buggy. I want to give you a small overview what is the moon buggy work after a development of seven years what we are, uh, where we are now in this competition with our students only to give you some ideas what you can improve into the future or what you can make better in the future. Um, we are on the way to create a poster. A poster for, to motivate students like you in different schools. Um, firstly, we have an explosion going of the moon buggy, where you can see all parts who are inside. Here is a, the list of all parts. These are more than 1,000. You have uh, industrial parts inside, bike parts inside, and you have own builded parts inside. You can buy uh, a wheel, you can buy a brake disc, you can buy a pedal, but you cannot buy a frame. You must make it by yourself. You can also not buy a differential gear. I can show you that differential gear. This is an explosion drawing. Um, this is now five years development. We had no differential gear in the beginning. Axle was broken, a lot of shame, and, uh, and it falls down to the course. And the next, and in this year we said, okay, we have to set up a differential gear. The first differential gear was big and heavy. 
as the next one, smaller, smaller, and now we have this, this 100 pieces inside is a real engineering work, uh, ignition molded pieces, laser cutted pieces, 3D uh, milling pieces, ternary inside, so, and, um, and the students made this currently in five years, but for this they need the units, the forces, and all um, counts what you need to know how big should it be, how many forces should be inside or is inside when a student uh, like yours sit on the on the seat and pedal with all uh, force what he have inside with a lot of of um, adrenaline in the blood and with all the concurrence what is behind and the team who is crying you cannot make this as a simulation you must count this by sensors directly on the course I give this you can turn it and give it around um, and that's why that we have a telemetry this is a this is a computer box what is inside of the moon buggy here in this box and there are a lot of sensors on the construction and they receive the forces, the data, the units, the turns and everything what we need, also the GPS position um, uh, recorded in, uh, in this computer box with an Arduino uh, microcontroller uh, with a SD card that you can res uh, record the data and they change these data also in a um, modem to send it by citizen band radio transmitter to a mission control center what is a computer far from the from the moon buggy and you can receive it on time and you see what is with the moon buggy now speed acceleration gps position heartbeat of the pilots and so on and so on and all these 1000 pieces um, you have to understand this complex machine completely what NASA want is a multidisciplinary team. So you cannot say, okay, I'm only a software um, um, designer and technique is not my thing. I only make the software. This is not possible. Also the people who make the technique uh, cannot say, uh, software, okay, this is your thing and uh, I don't want to, uh, to, uh, to, to spend my time in this. Or, um, Mostly the girls are the people um, behind the scenes who uh, translate the, the different texts, who organize the sponsors, who go into the press and make the speakers women and organize uh, the attention of the public, what you need to, to, uh, to win sponsors. They cannot say, oh, yeah, boys make the technique and this is nothing for me. What is when the reporter asks you, explain me that moon buggy. So you cannot sense them, yeah, okay. Hmm four wheels, and uh, you know, perhaps an antenna, and you must explain it correctly, that, you, that the people understand there is knowledge. This is multidisciplinary or multidisciplinary work. Are you understanding my worst English? Is this okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Germans. Um, you speak the Germans. Some. 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 <laughs> okay, and um, firstly I want to give you a small intro introduction, introduce what is multidisciplinary work, teamwork, integrity, safety for the highest goal of a profession that we have in our world, an astronaut. And this will explain to you Yvonne, she's my wife, she's space camp ambassador and she has a real space suit on her and she will explain you that space suit now. Okay. Hi everyone. So, in this space suit, uh, have the astronauts and cosmonauts on a body in the International Space Station. Only inside, so when they go out, they need more things for uh, to, to get um, oxygen and, and so on. And it has um, something pressure, something uh, against the heat or the coldness from outside. But this, they have sometimes uh, on the body inside. It's a Russian, Russian space suit named Penguin, or Penguin. And um, I can show you inside, you find such belts, strong belts. In front, also in the legs, and also on the back. And this belt 
help um, against the weight lessons. We here on Earth we have um, what gravity? Yes, gravity, Schwerkraft, gravity. But um, in the upstairs in the space we have it not. So when you are there and you have no gravity, you need something um, for your bones and also for your muscles. Uh, the, uh, what they lose against when you not have gravity. And you can put it so together that it's strong enough that your muscles have to work against it. You know, like um, dummy, the dummy tube, or I don't know. Just put your, your body together and your muscles have to work. So and this is like a training, a simple training for your body. But the astronauts have each each day also very good training to do on a, like a bicycle, a home trainer, or something for your arms, or um, a pet where they have to run one or one to three, three hour. But this is also a little bit help against the rhythm, against the losing the muscles and the loops. So now I'm alone. <laughs> but no, what's happened? The little one spilled her food and started crying. <laughs> so okay. Ralph went to go get her. Okay. So he's afraid. It's okay. Yes. So the next part is the part of him. So like what you now <clears throat> what you know about uh, the suits in the space, the other other things. Although this is for inside. And for outside you have the big the big white, <coughs> the EBAs. And what they have, what they need. What do they need outside the ship? Uh, protection against particles, pressurized suit. Mm -hmm. Radiation. What? Radiation protection. Protect, yes, for the sun. And also the other side. Cold. Uh, when you have not sun, Light. it's Heat. too cold. Uh, insulation. Isolation. Inside they have underwear, they, are, they have uh, long tubes with water inside, or a special liquid. And they, so they can um, <laughs> change the uh, warm water, the coldness uh, in this underwear. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Yvonne. Small applause. Not today, more holler than in Florida. We were in Florida last uh, week. Um, we had a KSC tour with an uh, engineer who worked on the launch um, uh, complex um, 39, what, is, uh, what was the launch complex for the Apollo missions and also for the space shuttle. Um, and they are preparing this for upcoming missions now. Uh, the first mission should uh, have a launch, a demo launch in 2017. It will be the SLS program, um, Space Launch Systems program, with a rocket of the full size of the Saturn V. Um, large rocket, what you saw in Huntsville, the big tower. Uh, a little bit uh, bigger than the Saturn V because there will be a rescue tower over it. And, um, this so is we are looking this forward. Is, this is for the German space program? Saturn V? No, no. No, your, your guys program it. Uh, I hope they also make some screws for that. <laughs> but it's fine. No, this is different. This is, uh, this is the US uh, rocket and space program. Oh, the US space program. Yes, uh, okay. to go back to the room and uh, forward to an asteroid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the next mission, what they want to do. Yeah. Now they want to make to do uh, to, um, to take an asteroid from one track to another track behind the moon, mm -hmm. and that uh, astronauts can go into that, collect soils, and, um, and and come back with that, that we understand how to change um, the tracks of asteroids who will be danger for our life in our world. The one and only reason that the, the dinos are not exist is that they don't have a space flight. Yeah? They cannot fight against asteroids, and that's the problem for them. And we, should have not the same future as then, 
as them when we have no space flight. We have nothing against an asteroid. You know, in the uh, 15th of February there was an a meteorite over Chelyabinsk in uh, in Russia, who rounded 130 people. A lot of dashboard camps recorded that, and it was only a small potato instead of a big uh, asteroid. What came or comes also to our Earth, it is only a question of time when it will come. And we have to build a shield against that to save our life. Yeah. Another way to save our life or to save, save our genius will be that we discover new worlds. That we go forward to the Moon and to the Mars and create um, um, a civilization there. We can make a terraforming of the Mars atmosphere and we have um, uh, oxygen inside to to, to use it by ourselves, but it will use years, you know, thousands of years to make this. Have you ever heard of Mars One? Mars One? It's a Dutch company that wants to send people to Mars in like 10 years. This will be a one-way astronaut. Yes. Yeah. And this is uh, not our reason to make one way. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering if you've heard of it. Um, yes, you can um, see it somewhere here on our sponsors that we are working together with the Mars 500 program. Uh, Mars 500, this is an international program that is uh, held in Russia. This is the Institute for Biomedical Problems, what is working uh, on that now. Um, let's look where it is. Um, and um, they have a simulator of the space station, like in the same size as the ISS now, and put uh, six people, six crew people inside and let them work there for 520 days. 520 days is the time what you need um, to travel to the Mars, to stay there for 30 days and to come back. And then you have 10 days difference for unknown problems. 240 days one way, 30 days there, 240 days back, this will be 510 days. And 10 days extra is 520. This is the Mars 500 program. And um, there was a third experiment in the last year where six people, six two people sit in this module and stay there for 500 days. This is a psychological problem of a crew what has no much no more air than in this classroom. 500 days, stay together. This is the the challenge what you need as man, as human, to, to take the way to the Mars and back. It is not the technique, the technique we have. But the physical and psychological problems of a, of a group of people, the, the teamwork together, this is the most important thing what we have to organize now. And we will need the next 20 or 30 days to fix all the problems of um, 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 recycle the, the water, recycle the, the air, and uh, the sweat is a big problem in uh, in the in the air. You cannot separate it in parts. This is electrolyte, and, uh, and to make uh, drinking water from it, uh, all this is working on the space station. But the space station needs also a, a regularly support of parts and extra pieces from the Earth up to the orbit and back. When you're going forward to the Mars, you don't have this. You cannot go to Lois and, and buy the things when you have them. Just go to space Lois. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a one-way astronaut is really not the future, what, what we want, because look to the future. When some of these astronauts have a successful landing on the Mars, what he do there? And the next people who really come to the Mars and want to come back, what he see? Scared it. No. Really not. This is a scary movie, but not uh, a real space flight. Yeah. Okay, um, let's look a little bit deeper into um, into the technology. Um, what you need to make firstly is to understand uh, the CAD programs, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, um, or what, whatever, um, and see that you can design your moon buggy in a in a CAD program. The time that you have a, a paper drawing with a pencil is, is gone, is gone. Um, you must um, understand this by the computers. But don't believe the computer first. Start with the construction and 
take, take a measure tool, puts this construction to your computer, understands it on the computer, improves it on the computer, and then you start again to improve uh, the construction by hands. You must work in a balance between uh, practical and theoretical work. Um, this is also what we have here. This is a seven years development. Um, the first year, um, this frame was made by Corridro. Very easy, a Corridro. Um, and then we understand it that it is not possible to, uh, to, to go forward with Corridro, also with a pen. Um, we must uh, take computers to understand the different movements, steering, um, uh, the suspension, and um, all the forces that are inside. The, the, our moon buggy has also uh, the, the talent to, to turn in the, in the axle in, in this piece here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that video. You saw that, yeah? Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> and it's, it is not the video what you saw on the, on the award ceremony. This is another video. This is not shown. Oh, no, not this. It was, um, it was a YouTube video of the German team. Ah, yeah. And they went over a turn and then they yeah. had a movie. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of YouTube videos inside. Yesterday I uploaded eight. The videos of our board camps. <laughs> okay, um, this an explosion growing in pieces. What goes up and down? So this is for a freak. Yeah, you must work nights, nights, and nights to make this doing. Um, but when you have only a, a stable doing, what don't turn, don't move, and anything, this is more than enough. But thousand pieces, what are inside here are real pieces. They have a number, they have an article number, and they have uh, a real, um, they are reality. You know? say a thousand? Yes, one thousand. Round about one thousand pieces. Oh, in one room. Are they very Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is the differential gear, what you have in your hands. No? This is so, round about one hundred pieces. You see here now how many? Seven bearings, oh uh, screws. And um, uh, ball bearings, axles, laser cutted pieces, yeah. so uh, paper um, in between the, the different. Um, what is the differential? The paper, yeah. What is the differential gear? The differential gear, where it is? Who can answer this, this question? Yeah? The differential gear takes a lot of split between two wheels semi evenly, where that one wheel can spin independently of the other one is up in the air. It's, uh, well, actually, no. Um, but yeah, it uh, lets the wheels turn independently of the other. Oh, right. Yeah. This is the wheel, the axle. This is the left wheel, this is the right wheel. This is the middle point of that circle and that circle. This is smaller and this is bigger. And it depends that this has is faster than this units per minute. Yeah? The turn of the of this uh, of this wheel. Right. So you need here this differential here in the middle that you make a difference between this and, and this turns per minute. This is smaller, this is bigger. And when you turn another circle, then this is otherwise. So it means that it allows the wheels to spin independently of each other at different speeds? Not independent. Oh. Not, independent. Not independent. Efficient, efficient I think. Efficient. Make them efficient. efficient. At different rates. One's turning more than the inside one. Because it's, you got a farther radius, a, a longer, wider radius than the inside circle. There is also another mystic inside of a construction. This is front axle, back axle. Huh? You understand this? Four wheels and the frame, the axles. This is very simple. The front axle. You need a steering, a, a steering in the front axle. This angle is stronger than this angle when you turn this way. This is smaller, this is a bigger. How to make that? That the wheel is, has here, when you turn left, a stronger angle as, as this. Right. You have 
between the wheels this pipe, you know that? Right. I don't know the word. Yeah? yeah? Okay. No? There's yeah. a left feet and a right feet that you can change right. it a bit. Yeah. Of it. No? Yeah. This point, when you have the construction in Poza, in, in, in the uh, right? The black, black. Right front. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So. Here, the wheel is turning, and then you have here a small arm on your wheel. Um, and here is, my uh, like a bolt, you know. These lines must be together in the middle of the back axle. That's the one and only mystic what you have to, to solve. This, 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 and this point. This is the steering geometric. And when you make this here, then you have this here, and this is no a parallelogram. This is an angle, it's a pyramid. And so you have the different angles to left and to right what you need to control the car or the moon buggy in a, in a corner. I can show you a movie of one of our moon buggy who, uh, what the students built together in 2010. They came to Huntsville, nice weather in the spring, we had snow in Germany, so they was, were excited to, to assemble their moon buggy. I must explain that they carry it in their light luggage, you know, disassembled with all pieces. And they assembled it in one day. Um, and it was a garage of a friend from Boeing. He is uh, living on the Rainbow Mountain in Huntsville. This is a small mountain on the top of there, just his house, very nice. You hear the spring with a lot of birds. And so in the afternoon, they were ready and said, let's make a test run. Okay, control our screws, all washers inside. Okay, make a test run, go up the hill. And he starts his driving with a board cam on it and with the walking telemetry. And he came back and said, I was driving 50 miles per hour. <laughs> I said, hmm. no, no, this is not real. Yes, I, was, I see on the tachometer it was 50 miles. I say, okay, I take the USB stick, put it in the computer, and I get a shock. Really, he had 50 miles per hour. Down the hill. Yes, this. And when you have, when on one bomber. part is failed here. You have like a rocket launch, a failed rocket launch. A lot of dead people. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that was was that kilometers or miles an hour? Eighty kilometers. It's better when it's faster. <laughs> starts the program. You have here uh, the speed. You have here um, the Newton. The f um, this is the force. G force. Yeah. This is the G force. No, this is um, not the G force. This is um, um, the force what is in the pedals. No? The torque. Arm. And torque. this is torque. Torque. left, right torques. Torque. 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 Yeah, torques. Yeah. 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 And and here you must uh, type inside the length of the of the track the mass of the moon buggy, 
and then you can select um, some units and um, the language. No? I make now American units that you understand it more better. <laughs> and, um, and I must select um, the log, log file, um, what we have um, recorded every year. From